Welcome to the class students. Today we are going to discuss about a uh, topic chemiosmotic hypothesis. Okay. So, this chemiosmotic hypothesis actually it is explaining how the light reaction is taking place. So, till now what we have covered? We have covered that uh, photosynthesis there are two phases one is the light phase and another one is the um, dark phase is not it. So, light phase light dependent phase the light phase all the Hills reaction how it is taking place that we have uh, seen the chart flow chart and uh, we have learned. And then we learned there are two types of light reaction that is cyclic and another one is non cyclic. Now, we are going to see how actually this light reaction is taking place. So, light reaction as I have already covered it is taking place in the grana you know what is grana is not it. So, what is grana if you are seeing a chloroplast. So, this is a chloroplast there are disc like structure present. So, these disc like structures we call it as thylakoids all the disc together we call it as what the grana and the fluid which is present in the chloroplast that one we call it as what the stroma. So, the light reaction is taking place in the grana which means it is taking place in the thylakoid and dark reaction is taking place in the stroma. Okay. So, in the chloroplast in the thylakoid the light reaction is taking place. So, actually what is been taking place to explain that we are going to cover a topic called as chemiosmotic hypothesis. So, in chemiosmotic hypothesis we have to um, see what and all is required for this process chemiosmosis. Okay. So, number one is your thylakoid membrane, number two is a proton pump means the proton that is the positively charged particles has to be pumped the hydrogen ions has to be pumped hydrogen ions you know H plus. So, positively charged particle H plus has to be pumped. Okay. So, proton pump a proton gradient there should be some uh, gradient gradient means what in some places it should be high and in some places it should be low. So, that the particles move from a region of high to a region of low. Okay. So, that is called as what the proton gradient towards the proton gradient. So, there should be a gradient one high and one low. Okay. And another one important thing what has been present is that ATP synthetase enzyme should also be present for this reaction to take place because you know what is the main aim of the light reaction. The, in the light reaction you can find what and all is taking place. There are three things produced one is what oxygen after photolysis of water oxygen is released. Second one what is synthesized ATP Hi, what is synthesized ATP. So, what is ATP? adenosine triphosphate. Another one thing which is being produced is NADPH2 nicotinine adenine dinucleotide hydrogen phosphate. So, these are the things which are produced during uh, which phase the light phase or the light reaction. Okay. Now, when you are seeing this light reaction chemiosmotic hypothesis where it is taking place and how it is taking place that is what we are going to see. Okay. So, that can be represented in the form of a diagram. So, you can see the diagram yeah listen very carefully chemiosmotic hypothesis this is so you can find this membrane is not it. So, this is an outer membrane and this one is the outer membrane this is a thylakoid this is one single thylakoid. So, if you are taking a chloroplast there are many thylakoids present and all the thylakoids together we call it as grana. This is one single thylakoid. So, this one is what the one single thylakoid only one I have taken and I have drawn. Okay. So, when you are seeing this thylakoid <coughs> this thylakoid is having two membranes one is the outer membrane Okay, the one which is out is the outer membrane and one which is in we call it as what the inner membrane. So, there is an outer membrane of thyroid and the inner membrane of thyroid. Thereafter you can find inside ok. So, this part this part ok. So, this is the cavity that cavity we call it as lumen of thylakoid what do we call lumen ok. So, lumen is the cavity of the thylakoid and this thylakoid actually in the chloroplast this thylakoid where it is present it is present in the stroma the cavity the whole cavity in the chloroplast we call it as what the stroma. So, this is stroma. So, this dot 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 blue dots you can find right. So, what is that that is stroma. So, the diagram I think it is clear you are having a chloroplast 
in that chloroplast the thylakoid this one thylakoid i have taken and i have drawn over here okay so when you are seeing the thylakoid the thylakoid contains an outer membrane an inner membrane and a cavity lumen and this thylakoid in the chloroplast where it is present it is present in the stroma the cavity this is the dots blue dots is the stroma is that clear now listen carefully <coughs> on the inner membrane of the thylakoid there is a complex present somewhere in the inner membrane of the thylakoid there is a complex present what is that complex that is some particles some chemical substance which is helping in photolysis of water photolysis of water you know water is splitting up into oxygen isn't it so water when sunlight falls on water it splits up into oxygen thereafter hydrogen ions and electrons isn't it so that is what is taking place when the uh, light is falling on the water that process we call it as what photolysis of water so for this photolysis of water there is a complex present which is present inside the thylakoid membrane inner thylakoid membrane okay so that complex helps in this process splitting of water okay now one more thing what we have already learned is that when you are seeing this light reaction there are in non cyclic two photosystem involved isn't it cyclic only one is it now non cyclic or cyclic photosystems are involved there is a where this photosystem is present you can find this is photosystem 2 which one is photosystem 2 this is photosystem 2 and this one is photosystem 1 so actually what is happening in light reaction you know that photosystem one is present and another one is photosystem two when the light falls on photosystem two isn't it and the light falls on photosystem one electrons are getting excited what is happening the electrons are uh, uh, means uh, the molecules the chlorophyll that is which are present in the thylakoid membrane photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 the acceptor molecules as well as the chlorophyll molecules these molecules are having electrons getting excited when the light is falling on them isn't it so this electrons when it is getting excited from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 you know what is happening there are some electron acceptor molecules isn't it so what these electron acceptor molecules will do they will accept electrons so what was the first one plastoquinone they accepted the electron then they passed on to from there they reduced and then again they released the electrons and it was passed to cytochrome to whom it was passed cytochrome from the cytochrome it was passed to plastocyanin thereafter gradually it came to ps1 where there were less electrons because electrons were given and they were taken by this ferredoxin molecule and all and it was given to nadh2 isn't it so this light reaction we have seen so actually where is this light reaction taking place this light reaction is taking place in the membrane in between the outer membrane and inner membrane here as well as here the chlorophyll pigments are highly concentrated carotenoids xanthophyll all pigments so these pigments when the light is falling on it electrons are getting excited these electrons are accepted by the electron acceptor molecules many molecules we have learned on that only one molecule we are writing that is cytochrome what is the molecule we are writing we are just writing sy cyt what is the cyt cyt is representing what the cytochrome now what is happening these electrons are passing actually the electrons are we cannot call these cytochrome as well as this plastocyanin as well as plastocyanin and all as electron acceptor actually they are transferring electrons isn't it so from ps system 2 when the light is falling the electrons are getting excited the electrons are taken by the plastocyanin and it is transferred to the cytochrome from there it is transferred to plastocyanin from there it is going to ps1 isn't it so actually what is happening is that the electrons are getting transferred from one molecule to another we call them as electron acceptor molecules because they are accepting then giving but actually what is they doing is that they are transferring the electrons so the electrons are moving down hill isn't it the electrons are move, coming down the hill so when these electrons are moving they have a lot of energy what they have they have a lot of energy this energy okay like when it is coming to from plastocyanin to cytochrome actually they are having a lot of energy this energy is used in pumping the 
hydrogen which is present in the stroma into the lumen. So, who is coming inside now? Hydrogen which is present in the stroma, it is coming inside the lumen. How it is coming? By using the energy which is being transferred by these electron acceptor molecules or electron transferring molecules when they are transferring the electrons from one to another, they are radiating energy, that energy is used in pumping a proton pump, this one we call it as what the proton pump, pumping the hydrogen ion H plus ions, protons you know plus, so proton ions from the stroma into the lumen, ok. So, this is called as what the proton pump. So, electron transport chain, electron transport means from, from plastic you know on to cytochrome, cytochrome to plastocyanin, from plastocyanin, plastocyanin to photosystem 1. Like that when the electrons are getting transferred, they have energy, that energy is used in pumping the electrons, sorry pumping the hydrogen which are present outside into the lumen. So, when this hydrogen is getting pumped into the lumen, the concentration of hydrogen in the lumen is becoming higher, ok. So, this one is clear. Now, listen carefully. One more thing how again one more factor is responsible for increasing hydrogen proton gradient, okay, creating proton gradient. What is that? Listen. So, when we have learnt that in the light reaction, PS2 will be present, PS1 will be present. From PS1, when the light is falling, it is going at accepted by electron acceptor molecule. Thereafter, NADP is getting converted into water, NADP H2, like that one reaction. Another one we learned is PS2, it is going to electron acceptor molecules at coming to PS1. Now, who is this PS2 getting electrons? They are getting it from water. We learned, isn't it? We learned from water only they are getting the electrons. There is no PS system 3. So, they are getting it from water. Now, here in the process how it is taking place? You know, when the sunlight is falling on water, the water is there is a complex, isn't it? Complex for photolysis of water. The water is splitting up into what? Hydrogen, oxygen and electrons. This electron is transferred to whom this PA system 2 and the PA system 2 is coming to its normal state, ok. From the excited state, they are coming to the normal state. So, oxygen liberated fine, but another one more thing is given. What is that? Hydrogen ions. So, the concentration of hydrogen ion because of photolysis of water also in the lumen it is increasing. Because of this proton gradient means a proton pump also you can find what is happening the hydrogen concentration is increasing. Now, listen very carefully what is happening actually the hydrogen concentration when it increases in the lumen here the hydrogen concentration in the lumen is high and outside it is less from outside it is being pumped inside isn't it as well as photolysis is taking place by that also hydrogen is becoming more. Now, when this is happening when you can find this uh, uh, hydrogen concentration is going on increasing inside there becomes a gradient there exists a gradient. Gradient means what concentration gradient hydrogen concentration gradient higher inside lower outside. So, hydrogen ion will move from inside high concentration region to a low concentration region. Hydrogen can go in through just a passive process just like that it can go, no it is not going just like that diffusion. It is actually performing a process called as we have already learned facilitated diffusion. What is it we are going to learn? Facilitated diffusion. So, what is facilitated diffusion? Uh, if you have not learned, I will tell you. Diffusion means what? Uh, transport, I think this year it was not there, right? Fine, yeah, I will tell you. So, uh, diffusion means what? Just imagine if I am applying a perfume, ok, over my uh, body. So, I am sitting in the front bench and doing it, ok. Immediately, the one who is nearby me will be smelling the perfume. After some time, even the last bench boy who is sitting or the girl who is sitting can also smell the perfume. Which means what? The perfume molecules, the aromatic molecules which were present in the perfume was highly concentrated where I sprayed, ok. Gradually what is happening from a region of high concentration, these particles are moving to the region of low concentration, everyone in the room all can smell it. The same agarbati also, I am just lighting the agarbati in one place, in the beginning there only the smell, after some time the whole room the, it smells. 
diffusion. So, particles move from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Now, what is facilitated diffusion? So, for this there is no need of energy, it will happen like that. Okay. Facilitated diffusion means the diffusion just like that it will not take place. Someone have to help in facilitate in carrying out this diffusion. So, then we call them as what? Facilitated diffusion and in plants when you are seeing the mostly facilitated diffusion is carried out by carrier proteins. What do we call them? Carrier protein. Here it is F0, F1 particles. What are the F0, F1 particles? The round, round particles I have drawn now. So, the F0 and F1. So, this F0 and F1 is who? They are the carrier proteins. What is their role? They are helping in carrying the high um, uh, hydrogen ions from inside to outside. Where they are present high to where they are present low, it is going to go. Hydrogen just like that it cannot go. Simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion is only possible. So, this hydrogen ion actually what happens is that from inside the F0 particles will bind with this hydrogen ions. Okay. So, the F0 is binding with the hydrogen ion. So, here the F0 particles a protein molecule F0 carrier protein is present. Now, thereafter you can find the after this hydrogen is binding over here the hydrogen is slowly passing and coming out there you can find another particle is present which we call it as what the F1 particles protruding out. One is intrinsic inside the membrane it is present, another one is extrinsic outside the membrane it is present. So, F0 is present inside the membrane and F1 is present outside the membrane and the F1 particle this carrier protein is actually acting like an enzyme. What is the name of the enzyme? ATPase, ATPase ok. So, adenosine triphosphate synthesizing enzyme ok and they help in the synthesis of ATP right. So, when this hydrogen from inside is moving out ok they are coming with energy ok you know that with the uh, losing the energy only these particles are pumped in and now it is moving out. So, when they are coming out they are having a bit of, a bit of energy within them ok. So, this energy along with this enzyme that is ATPase that is the F1 particle when it is moving here one reaction is taking place. What is taking place when this hydrogen is coming out the energy which is present in this hydrogen is being released. This energy is used in binding of ADP adenosine diphosphate to one more phosphate they will bind and they will form what they will be forming ATP. So, what is formed? ADP is binding with another one phosphate to form what? ATP. Where it is taking place? It is taking place with by how it is taking place? It is taking place by the energy which is released by this hydrogen when they come down the gradient. Okay. So, what is happening again once more I will say ma. So, uh, actually hydrogen concentration because of this pump as well as because of photolysis of water here it is more and here it is less. Now, the hydrogen will come out onto the stroma for coming out there is a process called as facilitated diffusion. So, F0 particles F1 particles will uh, try to uh, help in that diffusion and the hydrogen is moving out they are coming with a lot of energy. This energy is used in binding of ADP to P in organic phosphate to form what? They are forming ATP and the hydrogen is coming out ok just like that from inside it has come out now. Now, listen carefully. So, we have discussed mostly. Uh, so, light was falling electrons were excited electrons were moving the electrons were having energy. So, which helped that energy helped in pumping what? Hydrogen from outside to inside. So, here electron was less photolysis of water has taken place and what has given electrons was given over here. Now, this electrons has gone this electrons will be taken by whom? Another one enzyme is present here on the outer membrane I told you NADP reductase that will take help in the formation of what NADP to NADP H2 is not it. So, through electron transport chain it is moving and it is accepted by final electron acceptor molecule NADP which is getting converted into NADPH2 in the presence of an enzyme called as what NADP reductase. Now, this H2 from where it is coming actually there are many H2 I for understanding I will say this H2 from here only it is some H2 H plus ion scheme is not it. 
So, this H plus ion is only going and combining with this NADP and they are forming what NADP H 2. So, like that in the chemiosmotic hypothesis whole light reaction is explained is not it. Any doubt here? So, you have understood. So, oxygen is liberated here right thereafter NADPH2 is produced yes ATP is produced. So, what is the main aim of light reaction oxygen NADPH2 ATP production is not it. So, all these things are produced. So, when this process is taking place there is a proton pump protons from outside will be pumped inside. Then there will be a proton gradient. What is proton gradient you know high concentration gradient here and low here. So, protons from here with the help of this carrier protein will come out hydrogen will come out this hydrogen will go and combine with NADP and form what NADP H 2. And when they are coming down hill this hydrogen they have a lot of energy that is helped in converting ADP to ATP ok. So, this process we call it as what chemi osmotic hypothesis hope it is clear if anybody is having any doubts can call me ok. Now, moving on to the next topic that is dark reaction or biosynthetic phase. So, light reaction is done what was the main importance of light reaction oxygen ATP NADPH2. What is dark reaction? Dark reaction when you are seeing it is called as biosynthetic phase. Why it is called as biosynthetic phase or we can also call it as Calvin cycle ok. So, Melvin Calvin was the one who discovers this process and uh, this is called as a biosynthetic phase because here only the glucose the starch is produced ok. And dark reaction why? Because it can take place in the absence of light that is why it is called as what dark reaction. So, next stage is the biosynthetic phase. So, in this ATP NADP which were produced during light reaction is used in what synthesizing food ok. This is also called as dark phase because light is not dependent. So, it is independent of light where it is taking place stroma light reaction grana ok. Some plants when you are seeing the biosynthetic phase when it is taking place it is forming a 3 carbon compound in the beginning ok. So, if it is forming a 3 carbon compound then we call them as C 3 cycle what do we call them C 3 cycle. If it is uh, forming this carbon when it is fixed it is fixed and the first stable compound which is formed is a 4 carbon compound then we will be naming it as what C 4 cycle or C 4 pathway. So, biosynthetic phase are of two types it can be C 3 it can be C 4. C 3 we use the term what the dark reaction ok. C 4 cycle is also there that we will be discussing ok. Now, we are going to see the Calvin cycle the biosynthetic phase the dark reaction or the C 3 cycle. So, C 3 cycle biosynthetic phase Calvin cycle dark reaction all are one and the same ok. Now, listen students carefully. So, Melvin Calvin is the one who has given this dark reaction he uh, traced out this dark reaction with the help of a radioactive carbon ok carbon 14. So, carbon usually they have the atomic number as uh, uh, sorry uh, the mass number as 12, but here it is 14 which is it is an isotope ok. Now, when you are seeing this uh, carbon Mel Melvin Calvin when he was giving uh, this uh, cycle he said that there is a primary acceptor molecule which is present that one is accepting carbon dioxide and that molecule is ribulose bisphosphate who is that ribulose bisphosphate ok. So, RUBP ribulose bisphosphate is the primary acceptor molecule which is accepting the carbon dioxide. So, in this Calvin cycle there are three phases how many phases are there three phases what are the three phases one is carboxylization second one is reduction and third one is regeneration listen carefully Calvin cycle C 3 cycle ok. Who discovered Melvin Calvin what did he say? He said that the primary acceptor carbon dioxide is accepted by by a 5 carbon compound called as what ribulose bisphosphate RUBP and they are forming a stable 3 carbon compound. So, 3 phases are there in Calvin cycle what are they? One is your carboxylization, second one is your reduction and the third one is your regeneration ok. One by one we will see with the help of a diagram then we will look into it ok. Listen carefully. 
carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere along with water vapors when you are saying it is coming into the plant is not it. So, into the leaves they are making food mostly or the green part of the plant it is reaching which one the carbon dioxide and water vapor gases. So, they can easily diffuse through the stomata it is present. Now, when this carbon dioxide and water is getting into that time you can find inside the plant there is a chemical compound present called as RUBP ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate. This ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate is acceptor of carbon dioxide they are waiting for the carbon dioxide. So, this carbon dioxide is accepted by this ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate ok. When this ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate is actually a 5 carbon compound how many carbon is there in ribulose 5 5 bisphosphate 5 carbon and it is reacting with the 1 carbon compound carbon dioxide is having how many carbon 1 carbon is not it. So, actually they will be producing a compound which is a 6 carbon compound what they will be producing a 6 carbon compound, but the 6 carbon compound which is produced is unstable they cannot be in that uh, correct state for long immediately the 6 carbon compound will divide into 2 3 carbon compound ok. So, they are forming 2 molecules of 3 carbon compound understood I repeat again carbon dioxide is reacting with ribulose bisphosphate carbon dioxide is having 1 carbon ribulose bisphosphate is having how many carbon 5 carbon this 5 carbon is combining with 1 carbon to form a 6 carbon compound this 6 carbon compound is unstable and hence it immediately dissociates into 2 molecule of 3 carbon compound. So, how many molecules of 3 carbon compound will be formed? 2 molecules is not it. So, 6 will split up into 2 3s right. So, this process we call it as carboxylization what do we call them carboxylization ok. So, ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate is undergoing the first process called as carboxylization carbon with that they are mixing and they are forming a 3 carbon compound called as 3 phosphoglycerate. What is the 3 carbon compound formed? 3 phosphoglycerate how many will be formed 2 3 phosphoglycerate will be formed is not it. Now, we are going to see reduction. So, carboxylization is over next is reduction in the reduction what is happening 3 phosphoglycerate I told you 3 phosphoglycerate which is formed after carboxylization is getting reduced to triose phosphate many products many uh, products are formed during this reduction reaction. One of the product which is formed is sucrose or starch that is the food which is synthesized during photosynthesis. Now, when this reaction is taking place that is 3 phosphoglycerate to triose phosphate this reduction reaction there is the need of ATP and NADPH2. So, where is this ATP and NADPH2 coming from that is from light reaction we got what ATP and NADPH2 was produced. This ATP and NADPH2 is used up in converting this 3 phosphoglycerate to triose phosphate. So, this reduction reaction when it is taking place uh, ATP and NADPH2 is used. How many molecules of ATP is used? 2 molecules of ATP and 2 molecules of NADPH2 is used ok. So, this process we call it as what reduction. So, when it is ATP is uh, being used ATP is getting converted into ADP ok. And when NADPH2 is used it is again converted into NADP plus plus P ok. So, ATP is converted into ADP NADPH2 is converted into NADP plus plus P ok. This triose phosphate. So, the second process is also in pro over. So, what was the first process carboxylization what is the second process reduction what is the third process regeneration. So, what is regeneration? This triose phosphate which was produced is regenerating into again a new product called as what ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate. This triose phosphate is forming what ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate. So, for this regeneration also one molecule of ATP is needed ok. So, here also ATP is used and it is being converted into ADP. So, in this whole process three molecules of ATP and 2 molecules of NADPH2 is used. Now, listen very carefully glucose what is the formula C6 H12 O6 is not it. So, many glucose molecules will combine together then only they will form starch is not it. So, forming one molecule of glucose is not it later only they will be converted into starch 
for forming one molecule of glucose uh, how many carbon is needed six carbons here only how many carbon is fixed one carbon so in order to form this one molecule of glucose how many times this cycle should go on one carbon only one time it is fixing only one carbon how many carbon is needed six carbons isn't it so how many times this cycle should go on six times then only they will be forming what one molecule of glucose so this cycle has to be repeated six times six carbon dioxide molecule has to be fixed in order to produce one molecule of glucose is that clear yeah now listen carefully so in when you are seeing six carbon dioxide molecules is getting fixed only then one molecule of glucose is formed okay i told you why because one carbon dioxide is having only one carbon like that how many carbon is needed six carbons is needed for forming one molecule of glucose okay so six times the cycle is taking place in one cycle how many atp is used i told you here two atp and here one atp is used isn't it so all together how many atp three atp in one cycle three atp how many cycles are there six cycles so six into three is equal to 18 atps are used okay so 18 atp is getting converted into 18 adp right so 18 molecules of atp is used in this process another one is that nadph2 so nadph2 how many molecules is used? two molecules right so here i told you two molecules of nadph2 is used so this nadph2 two molecules is being used for one process for one cycle how many cycles are there six cycles so how many are used 6 into 2 is equal to 12 ATP, NA, sorry, 12 NADPH2 is used and that is converted into NADP plus, okay. So, like this in 6 carbon dioxide, 18 ATP, 12 NADPH2, out means it is gone, okay, uh, out of which what we are getting after the process of this dark reaction. One glucose I will get with 6 carbon dioxide. Uh, with 18 ATP is being used in that 18 ADP is produced, 12 NADP is, is used and in that 12 NADP is produced, okay. With this we are coming to the end of the dark reaction. So, ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate when there is much amount of carbon dioxide, they will act as carboxylase, ribusco that is RUBP I told you, isn't it? And if it is having much oxygen in the surrounding, they act as oxygenase, means they fix oxygen. When much carbon dioxide is fixed, they, they will fix carbon dioxide, okay. With this, we have come to an end of the C3 cycle. Hope it is clear. So, in the C3 cycle, when you are seeing what and all was there, ma, uh, I will just uh, summer it, I will just sum it up. So, there are three processes. One is carboxylization, reduction, regeneration. Carboxylization, carbon dioxide is combining with ribulose 1,5 by phosphate acceptor of carbon and they are forming a 6 carbon compound unstable immediately they are undergoing what dissociating into 2 molecules of 3 carbon compound 3 phosphoglycerate. This 3 phosphoglycerate is converted into triose phosphate and many other products among which some is starch or sucrose or glucose is formed. Okay. So, this process is called as reduction and in this ATP and NADPH2 is used two molecules of each is used ATP as well as NADPH2. From this triose phosphate you can find RUBP is again regenerated. This regeneration when it is taking place again one ATP molecule is used. Okay. So, one carbon is only fixed in one cycle. So, for forming one molecule of glucose six carbons is needed. So, it has to repeat six times to form one molecule of glucose. So, how many molecules of glucose they are forming that many carbon has to be fixed okay so with this we are coming to the end of this today's class that is dark reaction and chemiosmotic hypothesis hope the concepts are clear thank you take care